Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 18th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our uh, disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will start our analysis. Okay then, uh, what am I going to talk today is uh, the change in broader market sentiment uh, overnight during the Asian morning today with uh, stocks turning, uh, with Asian stocks trading into, the, into negative territory. I'm also going to talk about the Aussie which apart from the risk of uh, environment it also felt uh, the heat of uh, the dovish RBA minutes. I will also talk about the Australia wage, Australia's wage price index which is released uh, tonight and as for the rest events as for the rest of the events we have the UK employment data for December the German ZDW survey for February over uh, tonight during the Asian morning Wednesday we have Japan's trade balance for January and we also have one speaker on our agenda now, as it is always the case, let's start with the dollar's uh, performance against the other G10 currencies. We can see that the dollar traded uh, higher against most of the other G10s. It gained, I guess, ag it gained against NOC, Aussie, the pound, the Kiwi, the Looney, and the Euro in that order, while it underperformed only, I guess, against the franc and the Japanese yen. The greenback was found virtually unchanged versus the Swedish krona. The strengthening of uh, the safe havens and the weakening of the risk-linked currencies like the Aussie and, and the Kiwi suggests that uh, once again the broader market sentiment took uh, a 180 degree spin from risk on to risk off. Indeed, although EU markets continued cheering China's measures to contain the coronavirus, the majority of Asian bourses traded in the red. Although China's Shanghai Composite finish, finished uh, virtually unchanged, zero, gaining 0.05%, uh, Japan's Nikkei uh, fell 1.40%. At this point, we need to note that uh, the US and Canadian markets stayed closed in celebration of Washington's birthday and the family day, respectively. Now, what uh, spooked investors uh, overnight were warnings by US technology giant Apple which uh, flagged lower revenue and iPhone shortages due to the fast spreading coronavirus, adding that it may not meet its guidance for the first quarter of 2020. What's more, South Korea President Moon Jae-in declared an economic emergency with the nation's uh, stock market falling 1.48%. At this point, we need to note that Asian investors may have also been cautious due to Japan's GDP data on Monday, which uh, revealed contraction for the last quarter of uh, 2019, with the uncertainty surrounding the virus casting shadows over the nation's economic performance for the first quarter, it seems that Japan looks to be headed towards a recession. Now, overnight there was reported another, another slowdown in, in both infected cases and deaths from the virus, but China's uh, state assets uh, regulator said that the impact on industries will mainly appear in February. Okay, here we have uh, the charts showing acceleration and the slowdown on a day-by-day day day basis. Once again, I, I repeat that anything above zero shows acceleration and anything below zero uh, points to a slowdown. We can see here that the cases return back to the slowdown territory and that the percentage change in deaths is still in, uh, in a slowdown mode. Uh, so, uh, but uh, 
As I said, China's state assets regulator said that the impact on industries will mainly appear in February. So, this suggests that despite the slowdown, the worst, at least in terms of economic impact, may not be behind us yet. On top of that, the World Health Organization warned that with regards to the virus's evolution, every scenario is still on the table. In our view, the message here is that it is too early to say that the virus has been contained. Yes, China adopted tough restrictions in terms of uh, no travel and movement, but this is at a great cost to its economy. Imagine if those measures are not uh, enough and the virus starts spreading at an accelerating pace again. More measures would uh, need to be introduced, something that would add more cred credence to our view that the economic wounds could well drag into the second quarter. Now let's uh, move back to the currencies and especially the Aussie, which was among the main losers. Apart from the switch uh, to risk off, the Australian currency may have also felt the heat of uh, the minutes from the latest RBA monetary policy gathering. At that meeting, the bank de decided to keep interest rates unchanged at 0.75%, while the statement accompanying the decision was less dovish than anticipated, with officials repeating that the long and variable lags in the transmission of monetary policy allow, allowed them to keep rates uh, steady at that uh, time, although they remained prepared to ease further if needed. Having said that, though, the minutes uh, revealed that uh, the board discussed the case of easing even at that gathering, adding that a further rate cut could speed uh, the progress towards uh, the employment and inflation targets. Moreover, although in the statement they noted that the effects uh, of the bushfires and the coronavirus on the domestic economy will be temporary, in the minutes, it was noted that it is too early to judge the virus's impact and that it consists a material risk to the Australian economy. Officials, officials also noted that accelerating wage growth would be a welcome development, though that's not something to be seen over, over the next uh, couple of years. So, speaking about wages, uh, focus for Aussie traders uh, to today turns to the wage price index for the fourth quarter, which uh, is coming out uh, tonight during the Asian Morning Wednesday. The index is forecast to have grown at the same pace as in the third quarter, 0.5% uh, quarter over quarter, which would keep the year-over-year -year rate steady at 2.2%. However, with headline inflation ticking up to 1.8% uh, year-over-year during the quarter from 1.7% in the third quarter, this means that real wages uh, may have slowed and thus a, slate, a, ste and thus a steady wage uh, rate may not be a so pleasant development for RBA policymakers. I have the graph here which shows the headline in CPI and the wage price index, the spread of which is uh, the real uh, wage growth. You can see that real wages have been, uh, the, have been slowing for the last uh, three quarters and they are, if uh, the, wage price index, yeah, uh, the wage price index stays unchanged at 2.2% year over year, we may have another uh, slowdown. So this could prompt market participants to bring forth uh, the timing of when they expect the bank to deliver another quarter point decrease. According to the ASX 30-day interbank uh, cash rate futures implied yield curve, such a move is still nearly fully priced in for uh, September. Now, as far as the Aussie is concerned, speculation that the RBA may cut sooner than previously anticipated, combined with concerns over the coronavirus's impact on the domestic economy, may keep the currency underselling interest for a while more. As we noted several times in the past, during periods of uh, risk aversion, we prefer to exploit any Aussie weakness against uh, the Japanese yen and the Swiss franc, which tend to attract uh, safe haven flows. 
Now, as for uh, today's events, and during the European morning, the UK employment report for December is due to be released. The unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at its 45-year low of 3.8%, while average weekly earnings, including bonuses, are expected to have slowed to 3% year-over-year from 3.2%. The excluding bonuses rate is anticipated to have ticked down to 3.3 from 3.4%. Uh, According to the IHS market KPMG and uh, REC report on jobs for, for the month, starting salaries for both permanent and temporary staff accelerated somewhat from November's lows, which uh, in my opinion suggests that the risks surrounding uh, the earnings uh, forecasts may be tilted somewhat to the upside. Now, accelerating wages may be a welcome development for uh, Bank of England policymakers and may alleviate some pressure for cutting rates, especially after the resignation of Sajid Javid as uh, finance minister, which triggered speculation of uh, more fiscal support. However, as we noted in the past, our view is that Officials may place more emphasis on data pointing to how the economy has been performing in the post-election era before deciding how to move for forward. After all, they clearly pointed out at uh, their, last, uh, their latest meeting that uh, they will wait for data to confirm the positive signals from recent indicators, with inflation taking the first place on, uh, on their list. Thus, we expect Wednesday's uh, CPIs and Thursday's uh, retail sales for January to attract much more attention. Now, from, Gen from uh, Germany, we have the ZW survey for February. The current conditions index is expected to have slid slightly further into the negative territory, specifically to, 10 from, to minus 10 from minus 9.5, and this would uh, mark the seventh straight month with a negative sign. The economic sentiment index is also expected to have declined to 22 from 26.7. This data may reveal how the coronavirus has affected sentiment in Eurozone's economic powerhouse and may be an early omen with regards to which direction on Friday's PMIs may come in. Now, as for tonight, during the Asian morning, apart from Australia's wage price index for the fourth quarter, we also get Japan's trade balance uh, for January, with the nation's uh, trade deficit expected to have widened remarkably and mark the largest deficit since January 2014. Now, as uh, for the speaker, we have only one on today's agenda, Minneapolis, and this is Minneapolis Fed President uh, Neil Kashkari. So, that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and uh, listening. I hope you have uh, a great day and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 08 a.m. GMT time. So, goodbye and have a great day.